coming back to the the larger chains, I, I think one of the biggest fears that these guys have when whenever looking at the possibility of replacing, for example, their PMS is the transition of data. Mm -hmm. And because it, there's so many different areas of where data is going through that, that central point within their properties. And I think their biggest fear is how do they manage that transition so that it's done mm -hmm. securely, effectively, as price effectively as possible, mm -hmm. and um, as, as minimally, in, costing them the minimal amount of time. Mm -hmm. If, if there is a company out there that can solve that puzzle and then offer the level of support that they need, yeah. then I think there's there's a great opportunity there. So you mentioned before, that, and I want to come back to the, the transition of data, if you like. So if your existing customers are transitioning from an existing PMS onto Apaleo, yeah. what's the typical time frame? How long would it take? And I, I understand that it's not the same. You can't equate the that type of property or a smaller property yeah. to a larger property within a chain environment. Of course, the structure of everything is different, but um, I think I'd like to just try to understand the process. And because I come from myself, a background of installing PMS and training PMS, admittedly, it's going back to the old location-based server client environment. It took a two week period from start to finish. The go life took 24 hours without going to bed because you had to work through every uh, every shift and be available. So I, I want to try to understand how we've progressed from that point because I know a lot of people, even at the, the chain level within senior positions, have a very similar experience to myself. And I think they tap into that when they consider the possibility of how how can they change what they have without the, yeah. the, the sure. getting stuck in the mud. So maybe a good example on that, because uh, that was also the starting point for doing sales. Uh, when we went to ITB, we uh, had a so-called 30-minute setup show. So basically, we were inviting hotels to set up their hotels and doing that in 30 minutes. So this is the PMS setup, and this is very fast. I mean, there's, uh, of course, things you think about before, like what are my room names, what rates do I need, and so on. So there's some thought process, of course. Um, but this typically setting up your hotel doesn't take more than 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. The, of course, then there's the question like how can you set up your technology stack, which we mentioned before, like how can I select my applications and so on. And there's also like different things and, and themes we see. Um, if we have a, an integration or an app that's already integrated, it's done in a mouse click. Mm -hmm. So basically what we established was so-called Apaleo Connect, which allows you the same way as you connect your LinkedIn profile to enter a new platform, the same way we allow the apps to use the data from the PMS. And the hotelier is basically authorizing through the Apaleo Connect and the data is flowing from the PMS to the channel manager, to the IBE, to different revenue management systems and so on. And then they are basically pre-configured. But of course, this requires also the same thinking in, in, in these applications and in these, uh, yeah. in these areas. And we see a lot of them coming up in revenue management and channel management. Uh, we, we are just finishing one of the bigger German uh, channel managers who's doing this Apaleo Connect. So uh, we see that in different categories, this already works. And if you have done that, then basically you have half an hour for your PMS plus a couple of mouse clicks from the store. Um, and then of course, the data migration itself is always something where we are a bit bound uh, to, to the help of the hoteliers, but also we see some movement there because um, we know from certain PMSs we can easily do a transition because we know how we get the data out and then we can, or the hotel is getting the data out and then uh, can integrate it. And of course, this one will also be productized. Like at some point there will be these import apps where you say, okay, today I have a ProTel system and tomorrow I want Apaleo and this is how data comes uh, from one to the other system. And this is, of course, can be a cumbersome process, especially depending a bit on your app setup, like where do you need all this data mm -hmm. to be. Um, but we can actually get a hotel live in less than a day yeah. easily. And, and have we, have, we have today, we've converted hotels from different PMSs already, actually from most of the legacy PMSs on the market. Mm -hmm. And we really, we really see a niche there. I mean, we know how to get the data, so, so how to import it um, through the API and, and 
set up the PMS and put it into the PMS data. And if you have somebody specialized on a certain PMS type that says, you know, I want to have that app out there, which people then can use to convert old PMSs yeah. to a, a new generation, Absolutely. I will develop that app yeah. and then sell it via the app store. Yeah. So yeah. that is one piece that, that certainly let's, let's would go. be coming. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing which is oh. also important to mention is, one change I can see or we can see in hospitality industry um, happening is that the employee, the, the level of employees will be changing. You don't have the skilled people out there anymore that go into the hotels. There are too many hotels, not enough people in the industry. So how do you train those, those people? And mm -hmm. if you use the old PMSs and have to go through a process of doing a training of two weeks or four weeks or even one week per employee or for a group of employees, that's pretty much impossible in the future. So we have from the beginning said we want to design our PMS user interface and any Everybody can learn it within yeah. a very short time frame without any involvement from our company. We have not done one single user training up to today. So we have obviously done trainings for a revenue manager or a corporate mm -hmm. person that needs to set up the, the PMSs, but actually the users that do use the Upper Leo PMS, none of them ever had a training. They just go there, get the software, get access to the software, and then they, it's so intuitive they can actually start working at the reception with it uh, within minutes. Yeah. So it's a different world, and I think that needs to drive what we call lean, lean PMSs mm -hmm. or lean software overall. That's um, a requirement we have for our app partners as well, that we say, you know, if you want to come on the App Store, make sure you understand that this is the way to go. You do, we can't afford in hotel industry projects of several mm -hmm. weeks and 10,000s of euro anymore to make a tech stack working in a, in a hotel. Yeah. Pretty much impossible. So we have mm -hmm. to find different ways which are easier, faster, yeah. and which drives the, the industry forward. Yeah, yeah. And, and on, on the flip side of that, with the, with the third party apps that are coming in, um, who's accountable for the training of those services? Is that something that they then, they manage themselves directly with the, with the client? That's not something that you take on as a responsibility, right? No, typically um, all these applications are standalone applications, yeah. right? Some might be developed spe uh, specifically for Apaleo, but most of them have been there before or are developed uh, throughout. So um, they are separate products and such. So right. they are not like a mobile app which you download, right. but they are like a standalone revenue management yeah. system like yeah. ideas. So of course, for these specific trainings and so on, you still need um, you still need this company to be involved. Yeah. And I mean, that's also the ecosystem approach that we're yeah. not, you know, yeah. we're not lone rangers there. I think the, the important thing is though, that we see a lot of these companies um, that follow the same approach as us, that are trying to get the mm. guests into the picture, that are making the guest journey mobile, yeah. and uh, not require a lot of manual processes from the staff, that do the revenue management uh, based on AI, that do CRM and campaigning uh, based on C um, AI. So uh, I think even though it's still kind of a buzzword, it's uh, it's it's really coming. Like that, Definitely. the machine is taking over a lot of the the manual steps done yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just one one other question before I get on to the the hotel tech stack about this topic because I, it, it's interesting for me. The Q and A process mm -hmm. between um, yourselves and the third party vendors. Mm -hmm. Can you talk us through that process? Because again, from a hotelier's perspective, it may not be something that they uh, consider when they're, when they're doing this. So um, I'm, I'm kind of asking this question for the hotelier to try to get some information for them so that they understand the dynamic between what, what it is that you're doing. We have at Apaleo what we call a no buck um, philosophy. Right. So we, we claim that our system is always bug free. The way we achieve that is when something happens, actually the guys are supposed to uh, solve it immediately, change the code that it will work. And one of the things we did is all the support is being done by um, developers today. We have no separate support department, so the developers are responsible for the, for the support and uh, when, you, when the developers are responsible for that, actually they make sure that a problem that occurs does not occur again at three o'clock in the night. So they'll do everything to resolve that bug immediately. So we have a kind of 
bug-free um, uh, scenario at Abaleo today and we have all intents to actually maintain that in the future, that is important. And the second thing is, and Martin can, can elaborate on that a little bit more, the API really allows you to very, very clearly see at all times what is happening between the different parties. Because before you had the old interface program mm -hmm. problem, mm -hmm. you had vendors on both sides yeah. which were interfacing and then when a problem occurred, one said it's you, the other said it's you, <laughs> and we're never really able to figure out where the problem lies. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. It's actually not that easy to answer because it's uh, it's a big scope. But uh, let's imagine, dive yeah. into a couple of uh, of details. So, um, of course, we have a lot of customer requests. Typically, it's product related. Like, how does something work? Why? Does it not work like I expect it to work? Um, but these are these are very simply uh, solvable because you know you answer them one, you send a link, you have a documentation for that, or you improve it on the product yourself. Mm -hmm. um, second, you have things that are related to to apps, um, and then we we are using actually technology to solve it. I mean, uh, you know, it's a simple answer. So we use a. Um, a ticketing system which actually distributes it based on the questions to the to the vendor that's uh, you know that's somehow right. related to it. Right. So if it's something with rates and we are not managing the rates, but we have a revenue management system, the ticket is uh, a ticket is getting transferred. And this way, we also allow for multiple technology companies to to have this kind of support process in place um, because we can provide the software how we do it. Mm -hmm. So basically there is like a standardized approach, especially for new, new vendors, which help them also to improve on their support. Um, on the API side, of course, we have, you know, all this tracking that you, that you need, like knowing what is happening, how many requests, how, how quick, uh, how slow sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and this is tracked 24 seven. Uh, we have somebody on call as Uli described it for, you know, every, every day, 24 hours. Um, and basically we have a, another software system which is basically showing us when there's any errors occurring, like when there's some anomalies or, or something like that. So I think there are multiple uh, steps to, to think about. You have customer support, you have the uh, reporting or monitoring on, on the system status. And then you also have, when you go into integrations, you have to make sure that these integrations are proof or that they, that they are working, uh, that they don't do anything weird with data from the hotels. So we also have an uh, onboarding process we could call for the applications mm -hmm. for the integration, working on, on an environment where they don't work with productive data, right. they have a restricted access to data, only what they really need and what they can prove their use cases. So a channel manager shouldn't, uh, shouldn't create invoices, for instance, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. these, these kind of examples. Okay, great. Yeah. And, Interesting. and we have further ideas on how to move that forward. Actually, today, it's, it's a process we have put into place. So the onboarding for apps and the quality of apps is an important factor to us, um, that the, they have the same thinking, they have a similar approach. They might not be all technology as advanced as everybody mm -hmm. else, but, but it's coming there. But actually, for the future, we have very good ideas on how to establish standards in that area and say, you know, if, you, if a user wants to intuitively learn a system in a software, these are the important steps you need to consider in order to make that happen. Yeah. And actually there are software systems already around and we are testing a few of them which you can on put, on put on top of any existing software mm -hmm. and they make sure that the approach of learning a software and using a software yeah. is very similar throughout. And still the, the background, so the, the software systems might be completely different, developed by different companies, but the user experience approach um, is very similar. So right. there are technology ways of approaching that intelligently and I think we have a, a good way of doing that um, today but it can be improved. There okay. is certainly a way to go there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great. Let's talk a little bit about now the, the tech stack of the customer. Uh, when, when they come onto the Apple AI platform, how many of your customers really understand the value of the tech stack? And not only the value, but do they really understand the types of technology that will best fit their business? Um, and which apps within the store that they should be choosing that's going to be the right fit for them? 
Um, I, so it's, I guess it's a two-pronged question. First of all, how many of your customers actually utilize the App Store and take advantage of it? And of those, are they getting the right applications for their business? So there's different types of customers utilizing the App Store in different ways. So uh, we have a lot of these early adopters which are actually looking for ways to innovate. And then typically they will find their app that they want to work with on the App Store. And if they don't find it, they will see that we simply integrate this application in order to get this customer live. So the App Store is, is, an, is a good entry point, of course, for these customers. Um, when you think about the more traditional hotels, they typically you know, have a rather simple tech stack and at some point they think about innovating. So they come to us and say, oh, okay, I need this channel manager and I need this IBE and I need this um, finance system. Mm -hmm. And at some point they say, but wait, I also need a mobile guest journey. And then we actually guide them to the app store and tell them, okay, see, you have like these five apps to choose from. Um, you can see kind of what the product looks like. In some cases, you can try it out even on, on top of Abaleo. And then um, they, they see at this point that there is an innovative approach behind. Um, so I think it depends a bit on the entry point. Okay. Like, but Sorry, to, come back, to yeah. come back to your question, I mean, 100% um, of our customers today did use or do use the, um, the App Store. 100%. And the 100%. Yeah. Um, they all use the platform. They all use the Upper Leo PMS. But then obviously the amount or number of apps they use differs from depending on the type of hotel. So you might have a very simple hotel that says, you know, the only thing we need is the platform, the PMS, and we need some distribution capabilities and the IBE and that's it. So that would be the simplest example. And we have other hotels, typically more advanced hotels, as Martin explained, or maybe some chains, smaller groups mm -hmm. that say, you know, our tech stack needs to look a little bit more complicated because we have this requirement and this requirement and this requirement. And then they might be using five apps from the App Store or 10 apps from the App Store. But the, uh, our aim is that it is as transparent as e and as easy for any type of hotel with any type of app. Now the truth is, um, and, and let's use the example of revenue management. You might have revenue management tools which are really simple to implement, to activate and to use. And mm -hmm. those you don't need any spe special project you need to go through. And so that could be done in a seamless way and we could take the customer life within a very short time frame. However, if you're a more um, advanced group using revenue management, your, the revenue management system you might be using might be much more complicated. And in this case, you still would, you could use it together with Apaleo, but you still would need to go through a kind of project and training and onboarding with the revenue management company separately because you need user training, you need to find your strategies, mm -hmm. the overbooking. There are a few areas where complex revenue management requires more input. So it's, it's really depending, but we can prove from many examples that it can be as simple as everybody would imagine it should be today. We just had the upper day recently in Munich and, and it felt, I, I was happy enough to attend and uh, it felt almost like a, a tech family being there, right? So mm -hmm. br bringing all the different providers together that mostly are part of your marketplace as well and discussing how the market is changing and evolving. Um, based on that feeling and, and impression I had, is there more like a, a proactive approach in the future plan where you start recommending partners as well to your, to your future customers and hotels and, and having a glimpse as well on their existing tech stack and then saying, okay, from what we see here in your tech stack existing, we would recommend this would be a great fit helping you in your business. Is that an, a business approach you're taking or do you just want to maintain neutrality? And I, I think... I think uh, recommendation would be too strong from mm -hmm. our perspective. We, we, uh, if you think about any true app store in this world, you need to be neutral as a platform mm -hmm. provider. So you have, say there is a category and everybody which is good and applies and qualifies to be an app partner can get on that app store. So recommendation would be too strong as a word, but what we are thinking about in the future is actually do exactly what you say. So you can go to the app store and you have different um, kind of roles and characters of hotels and say, you know, I might compare to that hotel. I have mm -hmm. 40 rooms in a city center. I want 
a mobile guest journey. I don't want a mobile guest journey. My, fav my favor is on doing CRM in an advanced way or doing revenue management. And we might have some prepackaged examples where mm. they can go then, but the decision process is still with the customer. So Absolutely. the hotel would then see this is the prepackage and that are the apps within that prepackage that would fit your character. And then they can go ahead and still look at those apps. So I would, I would say we want to st uh, stay neutral. It's, it's key to us. It's important to us. Yeah. But still, obviously, we would like to make the, the journey for the customer to select mm -hmm. the right tech stack as straightforward as possible. And I mean, the other thing is um, there's around 2,000 apps now out there mm -hmm. targeting hotels, um, you know, revenue, re uh, CRM, you name it. Um, globally. Yeah, yeah. globally. Yeah. Yeah. So knowing these obviously wouldn't be anything we could do like thinking about our team, thinking about the 30 people, could be 50, uh, 50 100. We wouldn't know all these apps anyways. So mm -hmm. um, for us, it's important to support the onboarding process. Even that for the applications is something that they should do themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and then it should be the community driving the, the, let's call it recommendation system or recommendation engine where mm -hmm. it's about what app is good for which type of hotel um, and and then somehow there should be something Amazon like where you just yeah. say okay somebody that picked up a Leo and uh, a certain guest facing technology uh, picks this dollock provider yeah. and maybe to to finalize that is um, what actually um, delays the onboarding process most still today is is an interesting part we can do everything else within hours even including IBE, it's seamless, including distribution, apps you want to attach. So actually in the best case, um, looking at this, we could take a hotel really live within a day or less than a day and all remote. Um, the, the only process which delays it currently a little bit is the payment because if you are a chain or an individual hotel, you have to go through the um, know your customer processes um, in terms of being recognized with the credit card payment company. Mm. So that is an area which where we know we can approve and we have some very good ideas on how to do that. We are working today with, from our perspective, the leading um, e-commerce provider worldwide, which is behind um, eBay and some of the other big e-commerce uh, companies, uh, which is Adyen uh, from Amsterdam, and they mm. are really, really good in their in what they do. So we have a, a seamlessly integrated thing with them, where uh, for the customer the payment is not a problem, regardless where the reservation comes from. But the initial onboarding process, we have some very good ideas on how to drive that period down from the two weeks it is now, um, and the, in the two weeks many things can happen to take the customer life, but we need the final improvement from the payment provider and we have some very good ideas on how to drive that down to an absolute minimum right right okay great um so we we need to wrap this up but i still have two more questions i'd like to ask you could you give us your definition of a modern hotelier today i think a modern hotelier is has to be advanced in technology. I think what, what is really the key is that in the future technology will drive the hotel industry to a much bigger extent um, than it does today. And the results we see is that actually those hotels that use technology to the advantage of their guests and their operations are much more efficient than traditional hotels. We have some numbers from the past to compare those hotel groups and hotels, and it's the, the difference is just immense. So I think more and more hoteliers will get onto that track using technology more intelligently, and there are chains around which do it in a very good way today. I mean, mm. look at Ruby Hotels from Germany and some of those other examples. The way they use technology to become more efficient and offer a better guest journey is incredible. And this is what it has to come to. I mean, the, guest, the customers, the guests uh, want to see a better reception, a better way of being dealt with. And people like Citizen M and Ruby and others have that idea and they realize it very successfully today. Mm. I think there's also one emotional state. So um, when we think about all these different apps and the platform, it's, it's also a lot about trial and error, right? You have to be open to try out new things. And you have to see if it works for you or not. But you can't expect that you know you t you change your tech stack every five or seven or ten years. I mean that's just not how innovation works these days. So that's one of the the biggest things that we hope hoteliers get to um, that they develop this uh, trial and error um, perspective and that they can mm. you know based on a solid platform 
they can just try out new things and get innovative mm. much more mm. in the way Uli just described. It's it. a very interesting concept and I think um, the the biggest challenge that companies such as yourselves will probably most likely face is if that gets traction and, and succeeds, there's going to be a point where uh, <coughs> when you get to the large, and again I'm coming back to the, the large end of the scale, the, the chain level, um, you're going to hit a brick wall at some mm. stage and it's 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 education within the industry doesn't apply purely just to the independents or the smaller groups I think there's a very important and I say this with all due respect obviously because they're very efficient at what they're doing mm -hmm. but I, I do feel at times that the bigger chains somehow stifle their leadership or their management to make the decisions that could best be applied to the business because they're so structured in the way their technology is stacked and and they're so set within their their own boundaries if you like that they've created for the last 25 30 years mm -hmm. and I think the the management with the, and especially the younger management management coming through, these younger guys coming out of obviously very good hotel schools and are very intelligent people, tech savvy, digital natives, They're, at what point are they going to get into the, that side of the industry and feel like, I can't make a decision here, I can't move? So I think it's going to be very interesting to see that dynamic and I think the chain that embraces that with the support from the tech providers that's going to enable that, I think is really going to set themselves up probably best in the future. I mean, absolutely. When you look at the two next gen chains, which are there worldwide, and there are a few which are really, yep. really good and we like a lot, um, they are independent businesses. They are not part or, or a brand of exactly. the chains. Exactly. And none of the major brands, according to what we see, has really been able to establish this type of next-gen brand no, separately from, from their business. Yeah. And what's the reason for that? Because they tend to use their absolute standards they use for all other brands. Mm, and exactly if you right. want to establish a new business, next-generation chain, you have to think out of the box. Yep. And this is something which is hard to do when you are such a big organization yep. and so structured, yep. as you said, yep. absolutely. And this is another reason why I think, um, and I know we're, we're diverting a little bit, but it's a very interesting topic because I saw something very briefly on LinkedIn today about how um, Expedia and even C-Trip now are becoming their own management brands. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to be companies that will take that approach. Absolutely. They will let the hotels be independent. Does it provide them the platform? So you guys make the decisions you want around tech. Mm -hmm. Over the next 10, 15 years, yeah. that could change the entire dynamic of the industry Absolutely. at the top end that, mm -hmm. as we know it today. So yeah. I think it should be, it's a very interesting space. I'm very curious to see how that mm -hmm. will fold out. I think in that context, it's, uh, it's key what Uli said before as well, that um, we have a changing industry and everyone has so much trouble in finding stuff. So the overall approach in technology, uh, especially as well for the big players out there, uh, needs to change. And, and because they don't have the time anymore to train the people for four weeks or two weeks or whatever. Well, training so, is a perfect example yeah, of where mm -hmm. a platform like you're offering exactly. will cut enormous costs back yeah. for those big chains. Yeah. Okay. Shall I add yeah. final, the final question? One? Please go ahead. I found it, uh, me as a, a company and a provider and founder, whatever, I found it very interesting that you said before that you were so fast in implementing that process. And I was very, uh, uh, not smartly, but I was very detailedly listening to what you said before, before all this ticketing system. And I was like, I oh, had yeah, a mental note here. Um, so, uh, having just walked through that process again, uh, especially you, Uli. Uh, what are the top three hints you can give for a tech startup? Like, what do you need to consider when you start up a new company? That's, especially in our space. Yeah, well, obviously. Especially yeah. in our space. I mean, I think it's a combination of different things, but what is most important is, which is kind of a philosophy we don't see too much here in Europe, is don't be afraid of failing. Mm. That is that is the number one thing. I mean, in US, it's it, the approach is entirely different. But don't be afraid of failing here. Do something, try it out. If you have a, a good idea, go get some people that back you up, that give you the money. Good, get some good partners. And actually, we are doing something as well. We are working with a lot of the new um, innovative app companies that come to us. And not only integrating them on our app store, but also helping them. We are trying to give them recommendations and help them find network and 
uh, investors and angels and whatever. We are doing a lot of work in that area and we see great companies. I mean, we've run over the past year into most probably 50 companies where we say, wow, these guys have a lovely idea. Um, it's great. And some of them are very successful today. So our approach is don't be afraid of trying it out. Do it um, and, and really start the business. If you think your idea is good, you will have success. Mm -hmm. But the key to it in the end is the team. If you, if you have a great team in a startup, you can do anything, mm. you know? And this is why we are so proud about our 14 founders, people. The diversity we have within Apaleo is, is really very unique. I mean, on the Bits and Bretzels Founders Conference, which was just in Munich, we won of, one of the di diversity prizes because we are from 20 people from 20 different nationalities and everybody has a certain character and can do things very well. And is do, you, do you consider touring a, a different <laughs> exactly. country or something? Or? <laughs> okay, 19 countries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I also think that well, what Uli said, like, take experiments, try things out, like, uh, do something in a lean way, try to build a product and fast and, you know, don't be ashamed of showing it to anyone at an early mm -hmm. stage. What we feel, even though we are 14 people, it was still kind of lean, right? You have to build a PMS and typically, Uli said, a couple of millions, um, other people say 20 man years to build a PMS. So we were really quick and probably the first version wasn't anything worthwhile looking for, for Hilton at, um, but it was something where we already found the target group. So I think this is kind of the first mm -hmm. step that you build a product, uh, might be a paper prototype or you know even software and don't be afraid of showing it and sharing it. So I think um, this is from my perspective, the thing that I learned also from multiple failures <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, yeah. it's Excellent. part of the game. So Excellent. it's good. Very good. Nothing, nothing gives you more ideas than failing. Yeah. Fail and you'll learn more yeah. than if yeah. you ever learn from from anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly right. I think failure is extremely important in life. Period. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll never develop. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen. Thank you so much. It's been great, great having you on the show, um, Uli. Cool. Thank you very Thanks. much for being Andy, here, Martin. Andre. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell next, for, next to the subscribe button so that you get the notifications. And until next time, it's bye for now. Thanks. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.